Today on Beyond the Details, we have a Lamborghini Miura, one of the most beautiful cars ever made. Uh, we're gonna show you an in-depth look at this car. There's been plenty of videos, plenty of activity on Muras in recent years, but we're gonna show you things that you've probably never seen before, including just going over some basic styling cues that are unique to this car and that glorious interior. And we'll follow up with a uh, couple of detailing tips on how to clean parts of the car again that you probably have never seen before. So join us on this journey. So in typical Mira fashion, even the latch that controls the rear clamshell is complicated. So this is all leather covered chrome piece here. You pull the pin out, press it into place, that latches the back two latches and it's good to go. You're never gonna bump that open. One of the coolest features about this car, it's kind of subtle, but this right side grill lifts up you can see that's where the uh, gas cap lives. But what's so cool is that Lamborghini went through all this trouble to make this perfect grill with a little hand catch and you can access the, uh, the gas cap from there. Very cool. Anyway, let's take a look under the uh, front clamshell. Of course, these are not light, by the way. Anyway, this is where uh, all the fun stuff is. This has had a, a few modifications to it. It's got a new fuel tank and of course the fire system, all important. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, nice thing about cars like this, it's very much like a lot of uh, race cars that uh, in later years, it's, everything's really wide open for me, which works out great that I can come in here and clean up. Some of the other cool stuff that's Mura exclusive too, is all this intricate sort of a skeleton inside here that they put together to hold the body together. The welds are really awful, um, and that's how you know it's a real unrestored, or uh, at least this part of it has not been restored. But it seems that when these cars are being put through a restoration process, they always neglect to, uh, to make the welds look as terrible as they were back in the day. So that's what's interesting. When you see one that looks like this and big weld blobs in all the corners and everything, well, that's the way the factory did it. So, but. It's still interesting because we've got all these cool lightning holes everywhere and all these little braces. It's, it's just amazing. But what an incredible piece. You know, we've got you know, standard coilover stuff, unequal length hay arms, disc brakes, big disc brakes on this one. It's got the SV style brakes, which are vented. And um, basically, we'll just give it a quick wipe down. Again, the car is driven all the time. We want to just make sure that we uh, kind of touch it up. But as someone who cleans cars all the time, it's just so nice to have access to, to every little nut and bolt, which is great because usually I'm sitting on the floor working on something like this and you only can see the front wheel unless you pull everything apart. But with this, it's great. You can turn the wheel, do the backs of the tires and the backs of the wheels and it's easy, you don't have to take anything apart. Pretty cool. So now we've completed a little bit of detailing on the outside of the car, we're going to move into the interior. Uh, what we'll probably show you first though is how glorious this interior is. All this leather, all stitched here and beautiful gauges, everything's just very 70s high style, it's so cool. Um, but that's what makes a Mira a Mira. You're going to have a lot of fun with this. Uh, what we're intending to do though as part of the uh, detailing process is we'll come in here and we'll clean everything out. We'll treat the leather, clean it up pretty well and um, make sure it's, it's taken care of. I usually like to treat leather like this at least twice a year even if it's in a collection uh, just to keep it subtle and, and you know, properly moisturized. Uh, but most importantly, you know, this car is driven. It's driven a lot. So we want to make sure that uh, we do little things and uh, if there's anything loose or rattly or whatever, we can also fix those along the way. But in the meantime, we're going to have the camera come in here and uh, just take some beautiful shots so you can also enjoy this spectacular interior.
So this car may look familiar to a lot of you who've seen it with Jason Camisa's series. I just wanted to mention, uh, uh, as he did in, in that, that uh, this car has had a couple of um, incidents, we'll say, in this engine compartment, and most recently in a small fire. Because of that, we've got some uh, staining up here on the top of the air cleaner. It's actually blistered a little bit, and that's nothing we're going to take care of today. This will have to be taken off and refinished, and then these decals put back on. So what we're gonna do in here is just clean it back up again, take some of the dust off. The owner of this car takes care of it very well, so I just wanna make sure, kinda of dot the I's, cross the T's. So we're gonna spend some time in here, we'll get some good shots, and then we're gonna move into the, uh, uh, another area of the car, and we'll go over that. The owner of the car does drive the car a lot, so uh, we, there's some dirt in the corners and things, but there is still some evidence here too of the engine fire. Uh, even though it was brief, there's still some, some things in here that I can't remove without taking pieces off the car to get to. So one of the things that's exclusive, of course, to the Mira is the fact that it is a transverse V12. Not so much the fact that it's a transverse V12, but the carburetors, or at least the front section of the carburetors, are right against the glass. So when you're actually in one of these, you hear all that induction noise and you can hear all that sound and it's literally right behind your head. I don't know of any other car that's quite like that. We're actually going to take a look at one of the more simple things in the car, which is these taillights. The thing about cars like Amura and uh, a lot of the cars of the 50s and 60s is that because of these big fat carburetors, we're getting a, all this turns to soot, the whole back end. So after a good long drive, this is all sort of stained in black. In fact, right here in particular is this yellow is very dark right now and needs to be cleaned. So we're going to get to that a little bit later on. In the interim though, we're going to pull the taillights. So this sounds like one of the more goofy things, but taking the taillights out, cleaning them inside and out, also gives us an opportunity to clean the bulbs, look at the bulb sockets, and do any kind of uh, work inside there for the reflectors. But most importantly, we're going to make these taillights um, back to clear again. Right now, they're full of soot, dirt, and all kinds of stuff. It's a pretty dramatic change. So we're going to pull this taillight, the other taillight, We'll move to the bench, clean them up, and put them back in, so we'll get started. Okay, so we've got the taillight out of the car. We're gonna use a little degreaser on the inside, and then we'll, we'll clean it up, and then we'll finally polish it. Um, one thing I always like to check, though, before I get started, just to make sure there's no cracks or anything that to worry about, but everything looks pretty good on these. And this stuff works really well. You'll probably see some of the, some of the dirt come right off. You see the black coming off of the tail light here. And that's nothing more than just soot from the exhaust system. Round two. This also gives you an opportunity to get rid of all that old wax that's stuck in these. does have some molding marks here that we're not going to be able to take out. That's just part of the process. Uh, but what we are going to do now is give it a quick polish. That'll really make a dramatic difference. Now we're going to take some of the polish and just lightly hit the inside just to make sure it's consistent. Stick. 
Originally, these would have had a uh, small rubber gasket in here, and sometimes you get some of that residue built up inside. To so do the best we can to remove as much as possible, but sometimes it's it's stuck on there pretty well. It really won't hurt anything. Just give it a quick look here. Okay. I'll grab a cotton swab and. and so hopefully get the job done. Let's see. So this really doesn't take a lot of time. You just have to make sure you get all the corners, make sure you get it dry properly. And then a little bit of polish will go a long way. On some big tail lights, I'll use a buffer, a little one or two inch buffer, orbital preferably. So you don't want to generate a lot of heat. You just want to clean them. So there's your new tail light. This compared to that. Hopefully, you can see. Now, when they're back on the car, they'll look like jewels. And then we'll detail the area around them, the surround, and that'll really sharpen them up. Okay, first lens is done, we're all set. I've come over here, we took, degreased this area so far. Uh, we'll clean up the grill a little bit, but more importantly, I'm coming back in here to get this framing done. And then we'll clean up around here, maybe we'll touch up some of this. One of the things I like to use, this is kind of cool, uh, this is a chrome pen. It actually makes, it's a chrome ink, and you really can't see it unless you, Maybe you can see it. It's not that you can do the whole thing, but it's just a nice touch up for these areas that are white. You can come in here and just touch them up. Okay, moving on. Thanks again for joining us on Beyond the Details. We had a great ride today uh, working on this Lamborghini Miro, just a fantastic car. Every time I work on one of these, I find something I've never seen before, uh, and this was no different. Uh, it's just a, an amazing piece of art. That's a wrap for Beyond the Details. Like and subscribe.